In 1891, James Naismith nailed a peach basket to a wall in Massachusetts and created one of the greatest games in history, basketball, with no idea what this new sport would eventually become. Basketball grew, and in 1949, the two existing basketball leagues of the time merged into one, creating the NBA. Over the last 70 years, basketball has had some truly great eras and players. The 60s, with the superhuman Wilt Chamberlain and the ultimate winner, Bill Russell. The 80s, with the rivalry of Magic and Bird. The 90s, when Michael Jordan became, and still is for many, including myself, the greatest player in NBA history. The 2000s, when greats like Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, and Shaquille O'Neal won most of their titles and became legendary. And most recently, the 2010s, when three-pointers began to completely change the way the game is played, and LeBron James became a worthy rival to Michael Jordan for the title of the GOAT. Now we're entering the 2020s, after possibly the strangest year the NBA has ever seen, and I want to look back at these decades and determine which one was really the best? Which era of basketball was truly the greatest in NBA history? The 70s were kinda cheeks. Yeah, so this is gonna be a little bit different than the rest of my Greatest Decades videos. I've still gotta do the 2000s, the 2010s, and I intend to do one on the 2020s. But we're taking a little break here at the halfway point, and we're going to talk about the 1970s in the NBA and why they were unquestionably the worst decade in NBA, in modern NBA history, I would say. And when I say modern, I mean like since since the 60s, because like we're talking about like the late 40s and the 50s, like I don't know enough about them and I don't think enough people really care about them because no one ever talks about them. All right, before Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain got in the league, pretty much nobody ever talks about that point in NBA history. So I feel like it'd be kind of pointless for me to go over it. However, the 70s are a very weird decade. Um, they were just kind of trash. Like I said, they were just trash, all right? The best player of the 70s, unquestionably, was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Dude won five of his six MVPs during the decade, and he, his last and sixth MVP, most all time, came during 1980, so like one year after the decade ended. The, this was when the dude was in his peak, so you'd think that Kareem, I mean, it's a weak decade, all right? The 70s were a very weak area, era. You think Kareem's sitting there racking up titles, isn't he? No. The dude made one championship, or I'm sorry, the dude won one championship, and that's it. And he did that with Oscar Robertson on the Bucks. Then he went to the Lakers and won a bunch more MVPs and sucked ass for most of the decade. The man won, here, this, this pretty much sums up how bad the 70s were. Kareem won an MVP in a season where he did not make the playoffs. Yes. And this is back when the NBA had, like, like, 12 teams, okay? Throughout the 70s, the NBA went from, they started with like 11 teams, and I think, I believe they had something close to like 18 by the end of the decade. And during this decade, Kareem won an MVP in a year where he did not lead his teams to enough wins to make the playoffs. And a little rant here to the side, um, I think it's a competition between Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Kobe Bryant when you talk about who is the most overrated out of the guys I would consider top, like, consensus top 10 players. Like, pretty much everyone has them in their top 10. And I'd say for Lakers fans, it's Kobe, because there's some crazy Lakers fans out there who think he is, like, the second or third best player of all time. And Kareem is pretty widely considered a top 5, if not the third best player of all time and the greatest center of all time and I strongly disagree with that I'll probably make a video on it one day but this is a big reason why the man had a year where he could not get his team to playoffs in the weak ass 70s I don't care if his team was like four dudes who were freaking smush Parker okay this is the 70s he should have been able to get his team to the playoffs just by being Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and he didn't so that, that hurts Kareem's case a lot for me. But nevertheless, this man won half the MVPs of the decade. And then you've got other ones going. Um, you know, you got guys like, like Dave Cohens and Rick Barry, uh, John Havlicek. These are some of the other best players there. Wes Unseld, um, Walt Frazier, 
Willis Reed. There were a lot of great players in the 70s, but when you talk about like the top 30 players of all time, do you have anyone other than Kareem in your top 30? I feel like the only one who's really got an argument is maybe John Havlicek, and even then, it's kinda iffy. I'd say, I don't think it's crazy to have Havlicek in there, but that's like the only other one. Bill Walton was great, although he didn't get great until the end of it, and then he was injured, so he missed the rest of it. And you look at the championship teams of the 70s, okay? Kareem only won one with the Bucks. The start of the decade was actually pretty promising. You got Kareem on the Bucks with Oscar Robertson, and then you got Wilt Chamberlain and Jerry West on the Lakers being great. You got the Knicks when the only point in history when the Knicks were relevant, when they had Willis Reed and Walt Frazier, and they were pretty dang good. And then everything just kind of goes downhill. The Washington Wizards, or Washington Bullets as they were, they won some titles, including one where they won the title with a 44-38 and record. What? That's atrocious, okay? And obviously that season, I'm sure there's some context missing there, like injuries, but 44 and 38 record and this team won the championship? Again, no other decade in NBA history, not even in the 60s, would this kind of bullshit happen, okay? It just wouldn't. Bill Russell retired, Will Chamberlain retired pretty early on after winning the title with the Lakers. And then you got the John Havlicek Celtics that were all right. It was him and Dave Cowens. Dave Cowens is pretty underrated, although I think John Havlicek was better. Um, but still, these teams weren't exactly great. The Rick Barry Warriors. Rick Barry was a fantastic player, very underrated in my opinion. He carried a garbage team. Like, he might have carried the worst team. That might have been the worst overall team in NBA history to make the finals, or to, I should say, win a title. The only, the other one that I think really competes with it is probably the 79 Supersonics. I don't remember if it was 79 or 78, but one of those Supersonic teams that also won a title. Another bullshit, weak team that is garbage. Do you know a single player on those Supersonics teams? I don't. Okay, not without looking it up anyway. Like, they were they were just cheeks, man. The teams were just cheeks, and it was such a such an embarrassing decade, and it's why the NBA was really desperate for popularity when Magic and Bird came into the league. Part of the reason they were so impactful was because these two amazing players gave the NBA what it had desperately been missing, which is some super entertaining superstars, because the 90s just didn't have them. It didn't have the talent, and the Bird and Magic competition between the Celtics and the Lakers, it didn't have that either. You know, I don't like dynasties as a hardcore fan, but there's also something to be said about the league being so weak that a different team wins the championship every single season because they're just so, like, the talent's just so spread out because it's not that good. Okay? Guys yeah, like Wes Unseld and um, Willis Reed and, you know, Walt Frazier, Bill Walton, all these guys, like I've said, great players but not like guys you expect to be competing for being the second best player in the league. And like I said, Kareem, a little bit overrated, okay? In my opinion, if he, like, retires, like, if he goes to the Lakers and he only wins, like, one or two titles, I think we look at his legacy way, way differently. But because he ended up winning another five, like, five more titles with the Lakers, then we gotta sit there and look at his legacy and be like, oh yeah, he's probably the greatest center of all time, when really... I don't think he is, because he did nothing in the 70s after winning his title with the Bucks. I just don't think he was that, he was, not that he wasn't that good, because top 10 player in NBA history, no question in my opinion, but I don't think he was as good as some people believe he was. The talent just wasn't that great. A lot of really talented players at the time, like Julius Irving, George Gervin, all right, these guys were playing in the, MB, in the ABA, and they didn't come over until the very late 70s or the early 80s. So they weren't there. So the talent was all over the place, all right? Half the talent in basketball was in a different league. It just, it just wasn't great. It wasn't entertaining to watch. You know, that's why nobody talks about it. People talk about the 60s a ton. Nobody talks about the 70s because nobody cares about the 70s, all right? Just a bunch of weak championship teams, a bunch of weak MVPs. Just not a very good decade. And thank goodness the 80s with Magic and Bird came along and saved it because the NBA was really not looking good there for a couple years. Alright. So this was a shorter video on the decades, but I just wanted to go over the 70s real quick and why it sucked ass. <laughs> just straight up. Just straight up sucked ass. Alright. 
If you enjoyed this video, please like and check out some of the other videos on my channel. The rest of the Greatest Decades videos will be coming out over the next, probably next two weeks. We'll, I'll probably have the rest of the videos out. Um, and I've been making videos every single day uh, since the beginning. I've only missed one day of video since I started this channel. Not sure how long I'll be able to keep that up, but I hope you're enjoying them before I completely burn out. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed.